Well, just to start by asking you about uh, Toron and how you how you felt about your um, your performances and your experience there. Uh, yeah, it's still sometimes a bit unbelievable. I don't know. I've had like one and a half year. I made so much progression and I had yeah really good times on the hurdles and this indoor season that I already broke 51 in my first race of the year that was a bit insane for myself <laughs> and yeah it was Torun was really for myself to prove that I could also do it in a tournament because yeah I set fast times the whole time and I know that I normally could if I run multiple races but still I couldn't show it in a tournament because there weren't any tournaments so yeah it was really nice that it turned out the way I wanted to and I could really show in the final that I could still do what I normally do, even if it's a championship, if I do races or in the four by four, three races, because yeah, the 400 was really, yeah, it was insane for me to really win it. But I knew I had to keep my focus for the four by four because I wanted to not really party because you can't, but you're super happy, but you know, okay, I have one more race and we knew we could win it. So I really had to keep my focus. So after the four by four, it was then I really felt all the emotions, I think, from the season and you're together with your friends, really enjoying that moment and also the boys. So, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing. You you weren't just concentrating on on getting one thing right. You had a very, <laughs> very busy weekend. I mean, how, how much um, were you able to learn from, from that experience? I think a lot because in Doha, I had my four and turtles and then my four by four and well I ran then the Olympic standard in the heats and I was I was not there anymore with my head I was so tired and I was so happy and my semis weren't good and my four by four was okay but I really learned there like next time I have to step up my game to still be good at the four by four like mentally so that was really a challenge for me to do like how am I gonna do it and I just talked with Lea Sprunger I trained with her and yeah she has done a lot of championships already and talked with her like how do you do it and what can I learn from your experience because I don't have them really and also with Laura I talked about it like how are we gonna do it and we really just said okay you focus on the 400 meter and the moment that you crash the finish line you switch to the 4x4 four four. so that's really what I did and that really worked so I really learned for the Olympics this year that I just have to focus on my own event and then the moment I'm done with my own event, I switched my mind to 4 by 4 and it worked. So, yeah, that was really good to have that experience. So are, are you surprising yourself with how quickly you're making progress, but also the, the, the sort of the level that you've already reached? Yes, a lot. I mean, last year I did a good indoor season with 52.4. I was really happy and I was hoping, okay, maybe I can go to fun outdoors. And well, then... COVID came in between, but we really, we really trained hard during that time. We did a lot of endurance because we couldn't go on the track, but we trained really hard. But you had no idea on what level you were because there was no track, there weren't hurdles, there was nothing you could do. And then we had some like test competitions here at Papendal. And yeah, I saw already then when we got back on the track that my times were way better than indoors. But of course, indoor outdoor is a difference. So I didn't really know how fast it was. And then I ran 51 one on the flat and then 54 and a half with a mistake so and then 53 <laughs> on the hurdles and that was really yeah like after the 51 I got a bit used to it because you were like okay so this is my level now but mm -hmm. before that it was really I think if I would have run 51 seven that day I would be the same happy as I was with 51 one because yeah I couldn't really realize it and now that this indoor season we were really like okay I've had now one great year with so much progression I shouldn't just think that I can have another year like that but so far it's looking like like it <laughs> so that was that was really weird for me because I really was like okay I'm gonna make sure I keep this level and focus on my hurdle technique a bit and just do all the things better that I didn't do but well that could be better last year and then that I made already so much progression indoors it's a bit unbelievable <laughs> a bit uh, I bet you can't wait for for the outdoor season now to, to, to start hurdling and to, and to see what's, what's coming next. Yes, I love the hurdles. I love foreign meter indoor also a lot, I, I should say, but hurdles is what I like the most. And yeah, I'm just curious about 
for example, my steps, how I'm going to keep them, the last part, because that's now stronger. And yeah, just how I'm going to go between the hurdles because I have some more speed now. So I'm really excited to go back to hurdle training and uh, to really go back to the hurdles outdoor. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned uh, Laurent and uh, and Leah there. How How is the that training setup uh, working for you it's obviously working very well in lots of ways um do you feel it do you feel at home there yeah it's really uh i think it's a perfect setup for me almost because i trained with Ron Peters and then together with him i went to Laurent a bit so he's now the assistant of Laurent but he knows me already really well because i trained with him since i was 15 yeah. and now i'm so they work together really good and they are critical to each other but really like in a good way they just help each other to a higher level I think and at the same time my group is really motivating each other and with our performances we have Lika of course and I always did train a lot with her and we really push each other and then Lea also uh, with the hurdles of course and all the experience that she has so we learn so much from each other and Ayla she's a 100 meter runner but still we we are together at the camps and we try to do some training sometimes together and it really helps just the whole team and the men's side also and you see that we all do so well so it just works how we motivate each other in training and how our coaches just really make the best schedule for everyone individually yeah what what's life like at the training center do you do you live nearby or is it um you know uh, or do you have to travel much to to get there uh, no, Papano has their own, like, how do you say, it? buildings where you can live. It's like at the place, but I live seven minutes away with the car. So oh, okay. together with a lot of other athletes from my group, but also who do judo or any sport that you can do there pretty much. And yeah, it's just, it's set up to really get your high performances. There's always a physio somewhere. And I, yeah, in five minutes I'm there and I'm back. And yeah, you just, you're a bit in a bubble, like, really your sport bubble and I think that works really good because you just have everything you need right there and you just need to make great use of it and make sure you're good yourself so yeah I really like it here yeah well, you mentioned judo that <laughs> you, you used to to be a big part in judo didn't you <laughs> <laughs> I think well I broke my arm twice when I was really young and then my doctor said that I should do that because I needed to learn how to fall <laughs> so then I did it for <laughs> one year and then I stopped because I didn't really like it and I wanted to go to track and field but I was too young at first but now it's I don't know how it got there but all of a sudden I saw it at some things and I was like <laughs> what <laughs> I was really bad <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. So, am I right in thinking you got you got into uh, track and field? Your brother took part, and then sort of you you went along with him. Is that is that right? Yeah, he's four and a half years older, and I saw my dad bring him to the track and to the woods to have trainings. And then when I was finally old enough, I also really wanted to do it. And then uh, I started to do it. I think when I was seven or eight years old, just everything, and then. You just at one point try to specialize a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what is it you um, you enjoy about the sport? What it, what was it that sort of made you think? Um, yeah, I, I like this. I'd like to 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 do more of this. Uh, well, I had a really like my friend group was also part of my track and field team when I was younger. But at one point, like they all start to get injured a bit, or they started to party a bit more. So that went away a bit but I just I really love running it was always a way to just clear your mind and just have fun and not think too much about all the things happening and yeah, just do what you like and that's still what I like so much about it I really I have my sessions I like more and I like less but I enjoy every session and mostly the lactic sessions because then it's you really clear your mind. The only thing you can think about is the pain <laughs> and how you want to recover but I just love how you really can mentally challenge yourself so much in the sport and just let go of everything a bit by running and clearing your mind. There are not many athletes I can think of that would say they <laughs> really like the lactic. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what it is. It's something in me that really likes it. And Leah and I and 
we are really the opposite when I'm like oh yeah oh it's a really nice church she's like oh no I hate it and it's also the other way around <laughs> so it's funny but yeah I just I really like to challenge yourself with the lactic I don't know just to try to push through it and like this inner season I really learned when I think I can't anymore I can still do it 200 in an okay time and yeah you can really you push yourself to things you couldn't think that your body could handle with the lactic and then you can still handle it and I just really like that I guess <laughs> yeah. I, well I guess if, if you're pushing yourself that way that's when you find out what new levels you could potentially get to I guess yeah and I think when I was younger Ram would say like yeah you don't push yourself enough and I was always a bit like no I do it and I really try to go as fast as possible but I was a bit scared of the lactic then and now I think last year but also yeah this inner season I really learned like okay you can think that you can't and then you can again and it's really nice when you see yourself that mentally and physically that you break a bit those limits for yourself and go to a higher level and that I then also see that of course in my results that's amazing. Yeah, no, I, I was speaking to, to Laurent yesterday and he, he mentioned part of your character was that, um, you know, you like to get everything just, just right. You know, you like to be really good at <laughs> every aspect of your, of your event. Given that it's a, this is a, still a very new event to you, how, how sort of hard are you on yourself about, about that development, about getting things right? Yeah, when, when he gives me a time, I want to reach a time. And if I get 0 0.1 above it, I could get really mad at myself. And I learned a bit more to relax about that part because that's not helping you. But yeah, always when I see my hurdle technique and then I see some other hurdlers, I'm like, okay, I really, really need to get that technique better. And yeah, I never really feel fast because endurance is more my thing than the speed. And But at the same time, I can also see that I already made especially in the speed, a lot of progression. And I just, with my long legs, I need to accept that I won't ever look fast. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm hard on myself, but I also learned a bit more to be happy with all the progress I make. And then, of course, you enjoy it, and then you go like, and now I want it even better. But <laughs> I learned a bit more to enjoy it. <laughs> like, I enjoy it a lot, but to be not too hard on myself, I first enjoy that I made it, and then think about, and now I want it better like this. Yeah, because well, I, I guess if you were to even go back sort of sort of two years, and then look at where you are now, it's there's yeah. there's a lot of credit you could be giving yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's really like in the final, I think from Turun, I did my first two hundred meter in twenty three nine or something. Yeah, if you would have told me that two years ago and tell me that I could even finish the race, <laughs> I yeah, I would have just left. So I really, yeah, I really enjoy all these moments. And that's also what makes me, I think, good in races when I really enjoy the moments and don't get too nervous and just focus on what I do and know that I'm fit. I'm usually at my best. So it's nice that that is really how it works for me. Yeah. Uh, what do you like to do? away from athletics or away from the the track are there any other sort of hobbies you like to do or is it you know do you read a lot do you listen to a lot of music uh, I do study also a little bit now a bit less when I'm at my in my season but I do try to study because I really like to learn new stuff and I really like my study also and I know I need it for after my career because for it isn't forever and well it can't really with Corona, but normally I meet up a lot with friends to drink some coffee somewhere or anything like that. I really like to do that and just watch a bit of Netflix. And I have all these books that I write in, <laughs> but that's also a bit training related, but just about everything. Not like a diary, but more like my training times or what went well or these kind of things. So that's yeah. mostly what I do or my family, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a bit different now. What what are you um what are you studying? What do you like to study? Uh, communication sciences. I study right now, and yeah, I just really like it's really broad. So you really learn a lot of different things, and that's what I like a lot about the study. But it's also a lot of group work, so it's a bit hard sometimes to combine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, are there what are your are there any favorite shows you have on on Netflix? Anything that you you like to watch? 
Uh, well, Gossip Girl is my favorite show, but they just put it off for Netflix. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just watch all the new ones normally and uh, not too scary stuff. <laughs> just a bit too much and not think too much. <laughs> yeah, and um, well, the the past um, sort of couple of weeks must give you a huge amount of confidence for the for the season ahead. Yeah, it really did, especially now in the tournament that I also proved it and just that you really know you're on the right track for the outer season. Yeah, I mean, how much are you looking forward to coming up against people like Sydney McLaughlin or Dalila Mohammed? There's there's a lot of exciting hurdlers out there. I mean, it's it it could be it could be a great season for you. Yeah, it's really nice that I'm now at the level that I can compete against the best out of the world and you see the work you still have to do to beat them. So yeah, I can't wait to really race against them. They are, yeah, especially in the US, they are great hurdlers. And uh, yeah, it's really amazing that I can now run against them and uh, see what they do and how I can improve more. Yeah, I can't wait to do that. <laughs> yeah, and and the Olympics, it, it doesn't get any bigger than that. Are you allowing yourself to sort of cast your mind forward towards it just now or are you someone who takes things sort of week by week? Uh, I take things a bit week by week and well, of course the Olympics is the big thing for this year so you're always focused on it and now my focus was a bit of it of course with European indoors because then you change your focus to that and I had one week off really to also relax the mind and not think too much but yeah now First, I still have the world relays, which I'm also planning to do. And then it's my full focus on the Olympics. But yeah, it's the whole year somewhere in your mind every day. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just really excited to uh, go there. But first, summer training and competitions. And uh, when I feel that I'm really ready, then it's the nicest if you are at the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Well, I guess now with, with success coming, um, you have sort of ex expectation that that comes with that or you know people expect you to do well how how good are you at at dealing with that kind of pressure and you know or are you someone that sort of is able to block it out oh i think the connection was that I oh sorry really... <laughs> <laughs> sorry um uh what, is that a bit better is it a bit clearer yeah, it's not yeah. better. It was just I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, with with doing well, I guess um, expectation comes uh, with it. Are you are you someone that's good at dealing with expectations and sort of outside pressure, or do you tend to be able to just sort of block it out? Um, normally, I can handle it pretty well. Also, partly because I'm pretty harsh to myself so expectations of others is sometimes lower than I have for myself like I have to do this right and that right but at the same time I always like to look at it positive because it's always it shows that people think that you can do it and that's something nice and yeah at the same time I block it a bit because yeah I have my own thing and I need to focus on myself to do it and they can do it for me so yeah I just really try to do what I do right now because it's working and uh, not think too much about those things and just see them as positive things yeah and and what do you think about the well in in holland the there's a lot of really exciting athletes and a lot of really good work going on especially in 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 your group uh, it must be great to be a great to be a part of of that especially with the, the relay teams doing so well as well yeah it's really great the atmosphere is really good right now we're all motivated and we're all yeah just in training helping each other and also outside of training and I think you can really see that our group is working as a team because you see it in a 4 by 4 and in our individual uh, races also that yeah we really learn from each other and we push each other in the training and yeah I think that's really something special that we have it feels a bit something like we are a big family <laughs> who are just trying to help each other run faster and yeah that's really great to be in a team like that yeah well that's uh yeah that's great thank you thank you very much for taking the time to, to talk <laughs> no again problem. <laughs> and uh i hope everything goes really well for your for your season when it gets underway will you will you be doing any of the the diamond leagues do you think or um yes i think if there are hurdles i will try uh, 
yeah. to get in to them. Yeah, I guess, as you say, World Relays is the next next big one. Yeah, exactly. So that's exciting. 